potential that it's going to be a grassroots uh, uh, revolution. I think so. Because uh, 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 we are not fighting against, but for. Yes, yes, we are fighting for. for. I was in the council for about 25 years and also a period as the mayor. So from that moment on, 10 years ago, everything started to change. I start to get a picture of what is really going on. And it became crystal clear to me that we, humankind, have been uh, manipulated and dominated and uh, exploited for centuries. So, and this uh, country of phenomenon made me angry because I was so helpless. You can uh, decide what food you're gonna eat, what you're gonna smoke, uh, what uh, water you're gonna drink, what kind of life you're gonna lead, but not uh, with this phenomenon. Then you are just a victim. It's only a game. And they have to be good guys, and they have to be bad guys. And luckily, we are in the position to uh, be able to play the role of the good guy who has the chance and the opportunity to uh, overcome. Three days that we shared with them, my heart just, just dropped because it was such a beautiful way to live and such a peaceful way to live. I left thinking, what, what's this gonna be like in 10 years? Are, are, is, is everything gonna be killed off on the property? And, and if it is, what's, how are they going to get their food source? Are they going to have to take, take a class, you know, and get certified by company XYZ? And what are the requirements for that? And that really is the end of freedom. I'm concerned about that. I definitely, uh, I really am. Yeah. I learned to say everything is now as it has to be now. And everything is going to be okay. It's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. Yeah. Yes. I have this uh, deep feeling that in the end we will prevail because we have the right on our side. The cosmos is helping us. And I have, I have this uh, strong feeling that we are being supported by entities and by forces we can't even imagine. Here for the first time, we have this scientific uh, proof that we are being spread. We are being spread and it's incredible and it's hard to believe, but we are being spread. I think at this moment to stop is not an option. Once you know it and once you have a tool like this and an opportunity like this, that the issue of chemtrails or persistent jet contrails or whatever name you use for it, that this um, uh, phenomenon is recognized as being real, publicly debated on. In the context of geoengineering, I think it's high noon to bring this to the public. This is what the sky is supposed to look like. These are old paintings. We forgot this. I'm afraid. In the years that I have been a medical research journalist, I have looked at many, many things, and I found the same three issues in whatever I'm looking at. And that is that we are being dumbed down, we are being made sicker, and we are being made infertile. Citizens gathered from around the world in Belgium for the first International Chemtrail Symposium. The event attracted leading professionals, politicians, and activists who discussed the health, environmental, and social implications of these programs. Today, it's only going to be about facts, documents, figures, patents, licenses, everything that brings us truth to truth. We have no other weapon against this past complex than exposing and bringing their dark works in the light of the truth. We have the hope that by our efforts, more and more people will become aware of the fact that we are deceived by our leaders. So today, we, as a family, join forces with the people who publicly made known to the world that chemtrails are not a conspiracy theory, but a conspiracy fact from the Technische Universiteit Delft, 
in the Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Koen Vermeer. Well, I'm uh, Koen Vermeer, I'm a university professor of Delft University of, of Technology. Usually people are with their heads to the ground in their own two-dimensional space and they don't look up. But if you do, you see more and more space like this. And it, it, it worried me too. I, I have no explanations to our students about these phenomena. And then I studied it myself and I found out that I couldn't give them the answers they wanted because I think that the phenomenon is not natural. It's not natural what is happening and the explanations that are given to us uh, are not enough for me. If you look at them from a scientific point of view, the first thing a scientist does is trying to explain something. Because I'm smart and my students are not as smart yet, so I have to give them answers to questions. But if you ask most scientists honestly, they cannot answer all your questions. If people are using uh, climate control all over our heads, I want to know about it. I want to know the consequences, I want to know the health impact, I want to know everything. I need, as a teacher in my university, to give answers to my uh, students. And they have good questions. And I don't have the answers. And I want to know. Excellent. And we should discuss this. Ladies and gentlemen, for, for here you in the auditorium, and for all over the world, Michael Murphy. Well, thank you very much. It's definitely an honor to be here in Belgium. The, the people who are in power control everything. They control the markets, they control us, and now they're even controlling the weather. And they can use that for warfare applications. The one thing that they cannot control is what God had originally made, and that's natural organic seeds. This is called the Hegelian dialect. It's called problem, reaction, solution. The problem here is massive amounts of aluminum, things starting to die. The solution is company X that says, hey man, you're not getting yields on, on your crop. Everything's dying, but I got the solution. I got a seed that will grow in this environment. The only problem is now you have to start buying from me. We're a little concerned that maybe part of this agenda could be to kill off anything that's natural and organic and re-engineer it. With aluminum resistant GMO seeds. Uh, many may know we just got back from a week of filming in Hawaii and uh, it was an incredible trip. A big concern for the people there is they're beginning to see softening of the coconut trees. But their concern is that these programs may again be part of a, uh, of a broader agenda to destroy anything that's natural and organic so that the corporate redesigned GMO foods might be the only thing uh, only source of food for people. I didn't anticipate so many people, um, young and old, who are interested in, uh, in this phenomenon and are concerned about it. And I especially liked the, the address that the young girl gave uh, yeah. today, uh, only 17 and already making an address to the, to the audience that is, well, incredible. My name is Sophia Tzedlis, I am 17 years old. It is quite scary to know that the air we breathe is not what it's supposed to be. That the food we eat and the water we drink contain traces of those substances which are sprayed out over all of us as though we were being poisoned like insects. The feeling that this is causing me are feelings of deep anger and rage. I don't want to be poisoned. I don't want to have be infected with cancer. And I'm just so angry that this global poisoning can be going on, on such a massive scale, and not enough is being done to stop this crime. A clear answer to one question. Are we being spread? Have we been spread? And is it their intention to spray again and again? What are we going to do about it? How are we going to deal with it? How are we going to stop it? I know the answer. There is only one person who can stop it. And you know it. You are. You are the person, the one you have been waiting for. 
we are magnificent, beautiful, godlike, divine human beings. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sisters and brothers, in this auditorium and in the whole world, thank you so very much for being present with us. And for now, please enjoy this anthem. So, uh, anyway, I'm glad that the weather's been good for you fellas so far. Just think if we were doing this in the wintertime, you might, if you're going to Washington, D.C., you might run into snow. <laughs> Thank God or not. That's right. Um, you know, it's interesting because of the, uh, the different weather modification programs, there's something like, I think, right around 32 in the continental U.S. alone going on. So the theory is that geoengineering is in part weather modification. You know, Mike, that's a very good point. There are so many subsets uh, connected with this issue of geoengineering. Uh, people are writing to us all the time with information about the connection to global warming, the connection to weather modification. Uh, some people uh, think there's a connection with Morgellons disease. Uh, others think it's, uh, it's kind of a, a means of transmitting electromagnetic uh, impulses from the harp uh, antenna system up in Alaska and Siberia. Boy, it gets your head spinning. And each area, I think, is, is worthy of investigation, but we have so little time. I think it's wise for us to stay focused on just the aerospraying and the toxic effect of these chemicals and the destruction of the planet and the damage to human health. What more do you need than that to convince people that we have to put a stop to it? So to stay focused, I think, is our mission on this one. Jeremy, we had an idea. We know that you know the political system real well. Our idea was this. We have a ton of data and information that we've collected throughout our travels. And, you know, we really think a good way to end the film would be addressing this to elected officials, some of the senators. So we were wondering this, if you might be able to come and kind of help us out and perhaps show us the way in, in how to get this done politically. But it sounds like a really good idea, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'm also going to get to, in terms of researching who it is that we should really focus on talking to about this. At the very least, if uh, we could make it, make, uh, make it impossible for them to claim that they don't know at this point, we can strip away their plausible deniability that they haven't heard of the data that points to uh, ge geoengineering uh, stratospheric aerosol operation already going on. At the very least, it should be very interesting to go to district district of criminality and uh, put some people on alert. Yeah, you have a lot of enemies in Washington. That's that's where all the power comes together and the money, you know. So uh, there are people there, I'm sure, that just don't want us to do this job. But uh, I'm glad you're going, and uh, you'll find out. We took the data to Washington, D.C. There we presented our elected officials with the following letter. According to the fifth article of the Bill of Rights amending the Constitution for the United States of America, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. But the daily spraying is depriving all persons living within the United States of life, health, liberty, and integrity of our common and private property without due process of law. As a representative of the people of the United States of America, we insist that you do everything in your power to protect us and immediately put a stop to geoengineering spraying at once. There exists no justification, legal or otherwise, to poison the planet and its inhabitants. Now suppose that um, space aliens arrived on, maybe they're gonna land at the UN headquarters down the road here, or maybe they'll pick a smarter spot. But um, suppose they arrive and they give you a box, and the box has two knobs. One knob is the knob for controlling global temperature, maybe another knob is a knob for controlling CO2 concentrations. 
You might imagine that we would fight wars over that box because we have no way to